Hi everybody, this is Matthew Powers. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about aggregations with Spark. So specifically, we'll be talking about the group by, cube, and rollup functions. This shouldn't be too hard, uh, especially if you're familiar with uh, grouping and doing aggregations in relational databases. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what we'll, we'll cover in this video. So we'll start with covering uh, group by, which is our main kind of way we'll be doing aggregations in Spark. Uh, most of the time, so we'll start with a simple group by example with uh, with a single argument. Uh, after that, we'll move uh, and look at a group by example with uh, two arguments. To see how that that works. Uh, the group by function can, of course, take an arbitrary uh, amount of arguments. Um, after that, we'll, t we'll take a look at group by with filters. So uh, this is kind of the where and having keywords. And if you're familiar with uh, relational databases. So how that works in Spark. Uh, then we'll take a look at the cube function, uh, and we'll also look at rollup. And the cube and rollup functions aren't used too frequently, so you can probably cut out the video uh, early if you don't want to jump jump into that in too much detail. Um, okay, so let's dive in here. Uh, these, all these code snippets that we'll cover in this video are the same code snippets that are in this blog post. So feel free to read the blog post uh, before watching the video if you prefer learning like that. Um, I'll link to the blog in the video description. Uh, so let, let's create a, a little simple data frame here uh, with some uh, data on a player name and the number of goals that they scored in certain games. So. <clears throat> We'll make that data frame, and let's just use the show method to inspect the contents. Um, of course, we can also, in the Databricks environment, use this display function, uh, goals df, to display the contents. I found that it's probably a little, I don't know, I don't know which one's easier to read. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts, but I think for small data frames, show is a little easier. Um, okay, cool. So we can see that we have some duplicate players in this. So we have Messi has two rows of data and Pele has two rows of data. So let's run a group by aggregation to figure out how many total goals uh, each player in this data frame has. So in, the, in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to take the goals DF, we're going to group by name, and then after we group by name, uh, we're going to use this ag function. Um, this is to, to kind of specify our aggregations that we want to display. Uh, in this case, we want to display the sum of the goals, and then we'll just show those results. Um, we'll take, uh, after this uh, <coughs> example, I'll show you how Spark's object-oriented programming is working to make this code work. So let's take a look at this. Now, Spark's Object-oriented programming here is actually pretty interesting. This is, we're we're going to have to look at a bunch of different classes just to understand how this works. So here we can see how we have our result. The first column is name. The second column is the sum of the goals. We can see that Pele has a total of four goals and Messi has a total of three goals. Uh, I think that looks about right. Yep, Pele has a total of four goals and Messi has three goals. Okay, so let's take a look at what this group by uh, method returns. So if we just take this piece here, we can see what's returned, and we can see that this is returning a relational grouped data set. So let's take a look at that in this uh, Spark documentation. So I'll show you guys how to trace through this stuff. So if we go to uh, group by, uh, group by, Group by key, group by, okay. So here we can see that this is the uh, method signature for group by, and we can see that it's returning this relational group data set object. So we can click that, and we see that this, uh, this relational grouped data set object has this ag method. So that's how we're able to access, so you know, this line of code right here creates this relational group data set object. And um, when we have that object, we can call the ag function. And then what ag is going to do is uh, take a bunch of column arguments. Um, 
And these column arguments, so this is, in this case, it's just taking one column argument, it should be um, aggregate functions. So those aggregate functions are defined in this functions uh, object. So here we have a bunch of aggregate functions. We can see that sum is gonna be one of those aggregate functions. So let's find sum. Here it is. Um, <clears throat> and we accessed sum in this namespace by importing all these uh, functions. We imported org Apache Spark SQL functions. So that's kind of how that, that Spark code is working. Um, of course, when we run ag, it's going to return a uh, data frame. Uh, let's verify that. When we run ag, it returns a data frame. And then when we have a data frame again, we can go back and um, use the show method. So uh, I think it's really elegant how Spark uses object-oriented uh, programming to, to tie this all together. So let's uh, look at some alternate syntax for coming up with this same result. So I'm gonna delete this, run this. Uh, so we can see that in this case we have two columns, name and the sum of the goals, and the, the two rows with the, the player and their total goals. So this is a, a similar result, obviously, an identical result, and a similar syntax. So we're still using group by name, but rather than using the ag with the sum of the goals, we're just directly calling the sum method. So of course, this sum method is going to be defined in that relational whatever object, what was that called again? Relational group data set object. So we can call sum here, um, and we can see that it's just going to compute the sum for each numeric column in the group. So I think that um, in general, this ag function is gonna give you more control on what's uh, uh, being returned. Uh, a lot of times you don't want to aggregate all the numeric columns, like let's say there was a year of birth, we wouldn't want to aggregate that. That really wouldn't make that much sense, like the sum of the years of birth. So in general, I, I typically go with this ag function, although it's just good to know that this, this is available. Um, okay, let's move on to another uh, little data set that we will be using group by with. So in this case, we have this student's DF. Uh, it has three columns. It's probably best to just show it. Uh, dot show. It has three columns. The first column is the name of the student. The second column is their country. And the third column is their continent. So now let's take a look at the number of students in each uh, continent uh, country combination. Let's take a look here. So we have. Um, the continent, we have the country and the count. So there's three uh, students that are from Europe and Italy. Uh, there's one student from Asia and Japan. There's one student from Europe and Spain uh, and so forth. So how do we do this? So we used a group by again, but we, we passed it two arguments. So we're grouping by two different columns uh, in this example. And we're using this ag function again, and we're passing uh, count uh, of star as the, uh, the argument. So that's one way to accomplish this. Uh, similar to the other example, we can also use the alternate shorthand syntax. So again, we're grouping by those two columns and then we're just gonna directly call this count method. Um, similar to before, count is going to count all the, the well, I guess it wouldn't do that. Let's, let's look at count here. It's gonna count the number of rows for each group. Yeah, so in this case, count is probably a better candidate for using this um, shorthand syntax compared to, to sum. Um, it's gonna give you better results more of the time. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe in this case, the, the shorthand syntax is, uh, is preferable. Okay, so let's move uh, ahead and check out another uh, data frame. So this is going to contain data on two different hockey players in various seasons. So here we have data on uh, Gretzky from 1990 to 1992. And here we have uh, data on Messier from 1989 to 1993. Uh, in this data frame, we have their, the player's name, 
the, the number of goals they scored in that season, the number of assists they had in that season, and the season itself. So let's say we want to calculate the average number of goals and assists for each player, but only in the 1991 and 1992 seasons. So we don't want to look at this Messier 1989 season, and we don't want to look at the Messier 1993 season. Um, same, same with this. We don't want the Gretzky 1990 season. So let's run this. We can see that this is pretty, pretty straightforward, uh, pretty common to what we've already covered. So we're just running that where clause before the group by to only grab the data that's in 1991 or 1992. Uh, then we're grouping by the name and then we're running ag to get the average goals and the average assists. So we can see that in those two seasons, Messier averaged 40 goals and 78 assists, and Gretzky averaged 36 goals and 106 assists. This number is just incredible uh, if you're a hockey fan. <laughs> now, let's run a different aggregation uh, on the same hockey player's uh, data. And let's see that Spark doesn't use a uh, having keyword, which is pretty co common in other relational databases. So um, we take our hockey player's data frame, we're grouping by name, and then we're running our aggregations. And typically a, in a relational database environment, when you start filtering after running aggregations, you need to start uh, using a different keyword. Instead of using where, you have to use having. Now, Spark isn't like that. In Spark, you can use where both before group by and after group by. There's not a separate keyword for running filters after aggregations are run. So here we are adding this uh, average assists. So this is averaging the assists for each player. And we're only showing the players with average assists uh, greater than 100. So if we don't have this filter, it's going to show uh, both players, of course. Uh, but after this aggregation is run, we are calculating where the average assist is greater than 100. So it's going to filter out uh, Messier from, from that final data frame. OK, <clears throat> so let's take a look at cube and roll up and then we'll wrap up this video so <coughs> cube is um, going to apply aggregate expressions to all uh, possible combinations uh, that are grouped and roll up is pretty similar except it, it works from left to right and it just returns a data frame that has slightly fewer rows um, now i don't think cube and roll up are used too too frequently so you can definitely cut out the video now uh, if you're if you don't want to look at these kind of functions that you might not even ever use, um, there's a really good it says Spark Cube Rollup. There's a really good Stack Overflow question on this um, and an answer from where I got the uh, this data from. So definitely look at this guy Zero's uh, answer if you you'd like a different phrasing of this what I'm about to present. So let's take a look at this data. We have two columns. The first column is a word. Uh, the second column is a number. And what cube is going to do is it's going to apply aggregate expressions to all possible combinations of the grouping. So here we're going to run cube. Uh, we're going to run the count. Uh, and we are going to look at the results, sorting everything so it's nice and pretty. Um, all right. So Let's go to the blog. It's going to be a little easier to explain this with the blog annotations. Uh, okay, so here we have in our results, we have null, null. So that's the total number of rows in this data frame. Now we're going to look at when the word is null and when the num is one. And we can see that the count is one. So let's take a look at that. So when the word is null, and the count is one. So that's basically like how many uh, rows in this data frame have a number of one. And we can see that there's only one that meet, meets that criteria. Um, now here is how many rows in this data frame have a number of two. So 
when this word is null, it, it actually it just means like uh, ignore this criteria and only focus on this one. So how many rows in this uh, data frame have a number equal to two? Uh, we have this one right here and these two right here, so that is three. Uh, now it's how many uh, rows in this data frame have a word equal to bar? So that would be these two, so that should be two. How many rows have it when the word is bar and the number is two? So when the word is bar and the number is two, that's gonna be these two rows, so that's why the count is two, and so on and so forth. So a cube is gonna be a great way to uh, kind of run a bunch of counts on all different scenarios. And uh, rollup's pretty uh, similar. I don't wanna make this video too long, so I'm actually gonna skip rollup. Feel free to, uh, to read the rest of this blog, and I think you'll find it pretty straightforward. It's, it's pretty similar to cube, it's just, uh, excludes a few of these aggregation rows so you don't end up having eight rows you're gonna have just a few less so uh, I hope you found this this video useful uh, let me know if uh, in the comments if you have any questions or need any additional clarifications uh, thanks for watching bye bye